Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Our body's immune system, it's amazing, and it, it helps protect us from infection and has the ability to recognize and destroy foreign cells, like cancer cells. Mm -hmm. Now, when the blood meets a foreign cell, it can produce, most of the time, an antibody, an antibody to fight the invader. Now, while that's a good thing in most cases, for organ transplant patients, that can be a problem. And I'm not even a medical person, and I understand yes, that. Understand. That's good. About 30% of transplant patients are sensitized, meaning that they have harmful antibodies which will attack foreign tissue, such as that transplanted organ from a donor. But all is not lost for these patients. Here to discuss treatment for sensitized transplant patients is Mayo Clinic nephrologist Dr. Andrew Bentall. Welcome to the program, Dr. Bentall. It's nice to meet you. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Dr. Bentall, pleased to meet you. Great to have you on the program. Organ transplants, the gift of life. We've heard it a thousand times, uh, but we all know that rejection can be a problem. But this is a term that I have actually never heard of, sensitized. So tell us what that means. So I mean, you talk about uh, transplantation as being a great gift of life. And you know, I work in kidneys, so I mainly focus on that. But all organs uh, are, as you say, a, a foreign body for, the, for people to receive. So they have uh, an immune system that's great at attacking uh, in viruses, you, we all get vaccinated as kids, you produce antibodies, uh, but people through either prior transplantation, through blood transfusions, or through pregnancy can develop antibodies which, when you put the organ in, will attack it and actually stop the organ from working straight away if they're at a high enough level. So so our job as transplant um, specialists is to say, how do we put organs into patients and aren't, they're not going to get that reaction straight away? Does it happen more often with a, any particular organ or with all organs? So all, all organs, really. And we're seeing more people needing uh, not only a single organ, but maybe a repeat transplant. So uh, a lot of patients come to Mayo Clinic who've had a previous transplant, who've developed antibodies. We've had some success in the past in overcoming those. Uh, so we see a lot of people coming for their second, maybe third, fourth or fifth kidney transplants. Um, or people who've had previous uh, heart or liver transplants who then their kidneys aren't working and they'll come forward and they, they've been exposed to these foreign antigens from the other organs and developed antibodies. Do, do you have to have the organ implanted before you figure out, oh, it's not going to work? Or can you test before the transplant? So, so, no, that's a great thing. So when people come for transplant evaluation, uh, we can uh, do some blood tests which see uh, how their bodies react to these different antigens. And uh, there's some clever calculators that look at the last 100,000 donors that have come through the, the deceased organ donor program um, and how those antibodies that you've got react with those 100,000 donors. And then you're given us a, a percentage of how many of those donors would you react with and have a reaction um, and therefore make it incompatible to transplant. So people who have got a no reaction, no antibodies, a 0%, and those who are almost... Um, in, impossible it's never quite you know no, no one's ever 100 percent. but those who are very sensitized are at almost 100 percent against those hundred thousand donors i did not realize that there was that much difference between people's immune systems so you can actually now predict who is more likely to have a rejection phenomenon and who isn't yeah so there was some great work done in the 60s where um, paul terasaki took uh, cells from donors and uh, did quite a crude test, and that reduced the rejection rate and the um, immediate failure of transplants. Uh, it was called the the uh, CDC test. That's sort of on it. That's sort of the um, a larger test, and the tests have become more sensitive as we've gone along. So now we have a bead test, which uh, can look at the different types of antigens, how the antibodies bind to that, uh, and then we can compare that to the potential donor, whether it's a deceased donor or a living donor and how they would match together before you put the kidney transplant in. Um, we tend to then, if people have got antibodies, then mix the cells from the donor, again, deceased or living donor, with the recipient's blood to see whether there's a reaction there. And that's that intermediate test as well called the flow cross match. I thought this is what anti-rejection drugs were for. Is this a different thing altogether? So this is a different thing altogether. Okay. Um, People need to take the anti-rejection medication to stop the body from recognizing the, the kidney, heart, liver, whichever organ it is. Um, if the body recognizes that, it does what it, the body's meant to do. It creates an immune response like vaccination. It produces cells that recognize the organ, antibodies that are produced, and then will attack that same organ that it's recognized. The 
anti-rejection medication stops that reaction from taking place. So it's really important to, to keep taking medications morning and evening as you prescribe. Um, often we find people who maybe stop medications because they think they, they're all right mm. and they don't get any problems straight away, but they develop these antibodies and the bodies then survive. You know, we've developed over time, we've got these antibodies that then just stay there and are very difficult to, to switch off. So when you say, uh, so rejection is a problem no matter who you are, but what if you figure out that, a, so you're figuring out whether a patient is sensitized to a particular organ? So, uh, to the tissue typing of that organ. So some people may have uh, antibodies that would pre uh, maybe prevent you from giving me a kidney, but possibly oh, okay. your kidney would be fine for me because I don't have antibodies against you. So, so those antibodies aren't against everyone. We can... Um, uh, we can uh, decipher who, against whom they are, um, and then work out whether an organ would be acceptable for that recipient. But oh, okay, so it helps you choose the right organ. Yeah, there are some people, as I said, who are highly sensitized, who are, have antibodies against almost all of these donors that are coming through the system, and then they really struggle to get access to transplantation because they've got so many antibodies. Can you desensitize them? So that's something that we and other centers in the U.S. had been doing a lot. So over the last 20 years and um, we're able to overcome that initial high level of antibody and then you can get the kidney organ or other organs into the body. Uh, we've had some success putting livers in. Livers seem to be a bit more protective they, uh, and then you can put another organ in. So recently a sort of a liver transplant done before a heart transplant protected the heart. Um, mm -hmm. But also we can take away some antibodies but the body still produces those antibodies as the factory in the bone marrow producing those antibodies. And we're trying to develop some studies uh, to improve how we desensitize patients. So what you're really doing is you have upped the sophistication when it comes to choosing the right organ for a particular patient. That's, that's um, essentially what's happened. Uh, and these highly sensitized patients who are often longer on the waiting list, they, they struggle to get transplanted because they've got so many antibodies. They've been given a higher priority status and on the waiting list and on the national scheme, on the national program, because uh, we know that, say, in one region, you may not have as many donors. But if you look at the whole nation and the number of deceased donors, that actually a, a kidney that becomes available in California may help someone in Virginia. Do you think this sensitized patient is growing? I mean, is this going to become a bigger problem as we as people, well, as we change or don't change? I think it is going to grow. You know, transplantation is becoming much more mainstream than it was 20 years ago. Um, there's 100,000 people waiting for a kidney transplant in the U.S., uh, and about 7,000 of them are highly sensitized mm -hmm. patients who are going to find it difficult to transplant. This change in the allocation scheme has helped some, but those patients who, and there are about two and a half, three thousand of them who are very, very highly sensitized, will still struggle to get a transplant. And you can imagine if transplants fail through people not taking medications, there are going to be more people with these antibodies. Well, thanks to you and your colleague to, for giving the gift of life to so many. Thanks to you and your colleagues for giving the gift of life to so many. Oh, thank you very much. Dr. Andrew Bentel, Mayo Clinic nephrologist, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me.